I would teach my kids for a week something and then they'd watch one episode of Wild Kratts right, and right. then <laughs> they would learn everything or they'd tell somebody something. They're like, where did you learn that? And I'm like, clearly they're going to say mom because I just spent right. a month teaching them. And they're like, we saw a YouTube video on it. Right. Hey, everyone. This is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back with Avanella today and we are talking today about making homeschooling fun. Yay. Fun. I feel like we should have some confetti or something. I wish there was a way to like do that or some disco music in the background or, I mean, I guess we've got the schoolhouse rock music in the background. So that's pretty exciting, right? No, we need confetti for sure. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that Garrett, well, he kind of found that music, but he kind of put that together himself. I don't know. Wow, anyway, he's very a very cool. talented guy. So, so talented. yeah. I still love the music for the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. I think it's upbeat and fun. It and is fun. Like, like we're going to talk about making homeschooling fun. Right. We're going to talk about that. But before we talk about making homeschooling fun, if you want to make math fun, as fun as math can be, <laughs> go to ctcmath.com. Try them out for free. ctcmath.com. All right, Abby. We're going right. to talk today about some funness. Is that okay. a word? Funness. Let's fun make it. Let's make it a word. Okay. Funny, funniosity. Fun. <laughs> but nope, that's definitely not a word. No, that's definitely not a word. Fun. What's another way we can say it? I'm not sure. We're going to make, oh, just homeschool fun. Just right. stick with it. I'm just trying to make it fancy. The root word. <laughs> Did you read Fancy Nancy is, to your girls? Uh, maybe a couple books. It was great for vocabulary because she'd always come yeah. up with these other words. It was, I think you could check it off for vocab. Done. Oh, Vocab's yeah. done for the day. Speaking of that, I was going to mention this. So we were talking about curriculum yesterday yeah. and yeah. some of our curriculum choices. One of the things that we are doing this year, which Nikki Truesdell talked about this on an episode I did with her a few months ago. She talked about copy work. Yeah. And okay, this is so dumb. Like I know people, have, you know, you always hear about copy work when you get yeah. into the world of homeschooling. People are like, do it's copy work. It's a thing do copy in work. certain areas. Yeah. Yes. But she like brought copy work to a whole nother level for me and that it teaches kids not just good penmanship, but it teaches them sentence structure and vocabulary and spelling and writing and reading. Like it, it does all of those things all in one. So copy work, we're, we're really working on that Are you guys doing copy year. work? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Even Brooklyn. Um, and so I'm having them copy like chapters out of different books, out of the Bible, um, just stuff that is well-written, good literature. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I, there I'm you like, go. Why, why did I not do this? put all of that in the same box together like six years ago? It would have been so much easier. I don't know. Especially vocabulary, because when you use vocab, when you're like, when you learn vocabulary words right. and you're like, here's the word and here's the definition, that doesn't help me. Like I no. need to know it in context. Right. So it helps with vocabulary. In totally. That way. Do you ever but notice that when you learning. learn a new word that you've never heard before now, all of a sudden you hear it everywhere? Right. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Yes. Because yeah. your brain but I just- I rarely use it. it. You don't? Unless I hear it again and again So then you should again. force yourself to use it. Once you learn a new word, say, I have to use this twice today. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the funness. <laughs> funness. <laughs> if that's a word. Of homeschooling. Uh. So here, here are some things, here are some ideas okay. that we have that I think make homeschooling fun. Okay. Um, and I actually did some research. I looked at a couple of websites too, because I thought, what am I missing? But I actually had pretty much all of them. Um, so the first one I think are read alouds. I okay. love doing read alouds with my yep. kids. Um, there's just something about snuggling up together, yeah. um, sitting on the couch together and reading a book together because then you get, you're building a relationship with them, but then you're, you're developing a memory with totally. them because that it's you like then can talk about. Of, yep. Yes. And I love that, yeah. that connection. Like when you watch a movie, but only this is way richer. And right. then there's something that it's like an, almost like an inside joke, but it's an inside story, right. you know? And right. I, uh, uh, read allows are worked into our curriculum. So it's, it's pretty easy, but I, it's one of my very favorite things because then we talk about things that only us knows about it, you know? Right. Yeah. Because when I was growing up, we, like I read, I had to read books for school, right. you know? Yeah. Like we, we read Shakespeare and Ugh. Scarlet Letter yeah. and all, all, lots of other books that I, I was forced to read. Um, but I didn't read them with anyone. I right. mean, our class would discuss them. Right. But I didn't read them with my family. And yep. so there was like, there was a total disconnect there. Yeah. 
And so it wasn't as fun right. where I think it's so much more fun and not that our kids can't read books alone, but I just think there's something so unique and special about there totally read alouds with our family yep. and they can be fun read alouds. They don't all have to be serious classics. Um, right. you know, I mean, read the book with no pictures. Have you read that book? No, you haven't read the book with no pictures. No, I'm writing it down by BJ Novak. No. Oh my word. It is one of the funniest books. I mean, it's for little kids, but even Lacey will still let me read it to her sometimes. Okay. I'm and writing it down. It's, this is like elementary, you know, early kids, even down to toddlers, but it yeah. is so stinking oh. funny. Um, but I like how is, you say that was even, Lacey's favorite book. And you say you'll That's even Lacey will let you read it to her now. I've noticed yeah. with read alouds, all, we do a lot of read alouds, but we also do, and my kids are all a little bit older now, like I have a high school and a middle schooler. We still do picture books. And I oh, think yeah. that makes homeschool fun because I mean, my big kids will come join yeah. with the picture books all day mm -hmm. long and yep. they're so fun. And then we discuss if we like the pictures, if we don't like the, you know, it's just super fun. Yes. So reading period makes homeschool fun. I think it really does. Audio books. Um, you know, it's kind of sad because I, we're getting to this phase with Lacey where she doesn't want me to read her like the oh, little kid books anymore. Yeah. She's going to be 13. Yeah. And, um, and it's okay. I get it. You know, she's not, yeah. not that's even picture books, life. but I will sometimes beg her. I'm like, please, yeah. please just let me read you a like, green eggs and ham. I can read green eggs and ham that's really so fast, like really, really fast. Yeah. And it cracks her up. So anyway, yeah. That's but hilarious. yeah, audiobooks. That was another thing on Huge. my list. Yep. Yeah. We do that every at, at lunchtime. So we gather for lunch and we mm -hmm. listen to our audiobook. That's just kind of our, which leads me to one that I think to make homeschool fun is traditions. I think traditions, yeah. and and they don't have to be, what makes a tradition is they're not everybody else's tradition. But right. homeschool traditions, I think, is what makes, and that's what's going to be what our kids look back on and yeah. remember. You know, they're not going to remember, well, they might remember the math, math lessons. Um, but really, they're going to look back and remember the traditions of what did you do on the first day of school or, you yes. know, ours ours is, we have homemade muffins and tea. Um every morning during a certain spot in our school, you know, every day, um, we do it pretty much every day. So we gather together for our like science and history. Uh -huh. And then when the kids go to do their independent work, I give them muffins and tea. Um, oh, and it's so easy because you just make a bunch yeah. of muffins for the week. But I just, those are the little traditions that they, like Winnie actually said, she's like, I can't wait to start school again for the muffins and tea. Oh. And I'm like, wow, it really, it's also just necessary to feed them. Um, yes, right. <laughs> but they see it as this fun little tradition, you know, or another tradition we have is every morning um, they wake up to worship music playing mm. and then we go outside all of us together and we stand and we turn our faces to the sun for like five minutes to get that first, you know, boost of, of the sun in the morning. And yeah. that's just been a fun. Tr I just love traditions, period. Right. Yeah. What are some of yours that make school fun? Yeah. Tradition specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, I mean, we have our first day of school tradition, of, of course, where we always go and get donuts oh, the first day I of love school, that. um, which is fine. And my girls always look forward to that. Usually like what we've done the last couple of years is we'll actually go to breakfast and go have yeah. like a nice they're breakfast. Past and donuts. We'll, <laughs> they're like, yeah. feed me a full meal. Well, it, there, there's a place that has little tiny donuts here. So okay. I think it was last year or the year before we actually went and got those after breakfast so that we still were keeping up with our donut tradition. Right. <laughs> that was fun. Um, I... Man, tradition. We have like family traditions, but right. homeschool traditions. I no. don't know that we have very. Maybe I need to start making muffins yeah, so I can I, be just like Abby. Can you I send me a recipe? What kind of yeah. muffins do you make? Oh, I make them a, a different every time. I mean, I don't know. Usually, it's like yeah. a sourdough muffin base, and I throw in whatever I have. Sourdough muffins? In. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I use everything sourdough, and then I'll just throw oh. in whatever's in them. But you don't even have to do muffins. You could just buy muffins or buy. I mean, don't feel like you have to make, but just. Can Just I buy like the little Debbie's muffins? Done. Are sold. those good? No. Her. Not good for <laughs> if you. If we ate those every day. No, that would be terrible. Imagine? The end of the year, we all weigh an extra 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> There's your tradition. I mean, I know everybody has family traditions, but I really think homeschool traditions yeah. really make it fun. You know, yes. every Friday we do this or every lunch, you know, and it doesn't have to be big. Like our tradition is at lunchtime, we do a read aloud. It's just a fun yeah. thing. I don't know. That's fun. Our tradition is trying not to die. I mean, that's there you like... go. Trying to get through the day. <laughs> yes. All in one piece. I'm just oh, kidding. Funny. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, our, our first day of school 
I love donut that. tradition. It's probably our best one, but yeah. we have more like Christmas traditions yeah, and you know totally. things like that. But we we're gonna talk about that on another episode. Yes, we are. Um so yeah, uh games though, that's another thing. We Ooh, love there you to play go. games in our family. We play lots of games. Okay. Um, Almost every day, like there's at least, we don't have a specific time. Right. Uh, but even during the summertime, like you do we games. pretty much always have a stack of Uno cards sitting out, um, spotted, Fun. sitting out. And then we often play other games like um, Scattergories. And that's probably a good way to diffuse when, when kids start to struggle in certain, you just diffuse it by playing a game. Totally. That's a great yes. idea to just have a game handy. So when things start to go south, let's play Uno. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And we, um, over the summer, we actually got a foosball table. Oh, fun. And it, yeah. So that's been fun. So foosball goes on every day and there is lots of bragging rights in our family now. (laughs) I actually don't enjoy playing foosball. Okay. Um, so my girls will ask me, but you, that's more of a Garrett, um, thing. He plays with the girls every single day. They play foosball. It's totally fun. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That makes homeschool fun. Okay. Here's one. So I don't know how much time we have, but we started, this started when the kids were little and they'd be reading a couple different books and rather than narrate, because, you know, everybody's into narration, which is really important because you're learning how to communicate and yeah, um, you're learning how to, it helps with comprehension and all that. But we did, and I, I don't think I could get my older kids to do it now, but I can get when they're younger and my younger will, but they act out the book. So we all oh, sit yeah. on the couch and then you have to, without talking, you have to tell us what happened in the chapter you read through acting. Oh, fine. And I, we used to do that all the time. And I'm like, I want to bring it back. And my older two were like, that's not happening. But I'm like, okay, fine. The little one's going to this year. But that always made homeschool really fun. It made sharing your book rather than, you know, answering questions to mom, you know, or uh-huh. filling out a worksheet. Like those are so boring. And we get to, as homeschoolers, do it and, and take whatever concept and make it more fun. And so we always yeah. acted books out. I thought that was always fun. That is fun. Yeah, we've done that with Bible stories oh, there um, you, in that's the past. Fun. And, and still, even sometimes we'll be reading a Bible story and it's usually Lacey. She'll jump up and say, okay, I'm going to act this one out. And I she'll like do that. some, you know, dorky thing. And it's really it fun. It beats quizzes. It beats worksheets. Totally. It, beats, yes. it beats all the lame things that you could be doing for reading right. comprehension and it makes it just exciting and fun. Yeah. The whole purpose is for them to remember what it is yes. that they're reading or what it is that they're doing. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's super fun. That's I'm just idea. acting things out and it shows the different personalities of your oh, kids. Totally. Right? Totally. History. That'd be fun to actually have your kids oh, yeah. act out the history lesson we did today. Yes. Yeah. Yep, that so would, fun. I love they, it. you know, end up with sheets and pillowcases on their heads totally. and all kinds of random things. It. So yes. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Abinella. Um, Okay, so we're talking more ideas about how to make homeschool fun. Um, we're going to talk in a future episode soon uh, with Abby again about healthy homeschooling. And we're going to talk a lot in that episode about outdoor time. But mm-hmm. that is one of the things that I think is important in making homeschool yes. fun. And this is something that our family struggles with so much, Abby, because we're not like you. And and we grew up as city folk, you know, right. like that's right. just... And so it does not come as naturally for us. And so we have to like make ourselves get outside. But what um, if you I just like, let's go throw a, a blanket thing. on the grass and read our read aloud on the grass. I mean, it doesn't have to be crazy, just simple. Right. You know, yes. But here's the thing. We are all very easily distracted. Oh. And so if we go like throw a blanket, like we live in a neighborhood okay. and there's a walking path that goes right behind our house. And oh, so okay. there's people all day long walking on the walking path and walking their dogs and walking their babies. And, and I don't know why it just, it, I feel like, or, you know, I don't know. We'll be sitting on the blanket and like, oh my goodness, there's a grasshopper. Ah!" (laughs) There's screams and runs. And I mean, it's just, there's every time we've done that, it seems like there's so many distractions outside. Um, so yes, in theory, it's a great idea. And maybe we need to just discipline ourselves to not be distracted. Oh, that's so funny. Why all the crazy rent? Like I hear homeschool moms who go to the park and do school. I'm like, we could never. Yeah. If there are people around, that doesn't work for us. But no. okay, then in between breaks, like on your breaks, right? Then you go outside. Oh my gosh, here's a tradition. This one's hilarious. On the first day of the snowfall, we 
Uh, well, it started out when the kid, when Colson was teeny, it was just, just in his diaper. He'd go run around the yard three times. Then as <laughs> they get older, so um, they go with no shoes, no socks, no, you know, and they oh run goodness. around the yard three times. But you could even do that. Like, okay, we're in between science and history. Go run around the yard three times and, yeah. you know, just something to get them outside Yes, for those tiny little breaks, you know? Yes. Yeah. And then you're, well, then, then you can stay inside since you're distracted for the actual learning stuff. Yeah. And we've, we have worked to get some things like we got, um, cornhole okay. this summer. So that, there like, you go. And I got that because I wanted to have a way to just go outside. Like we have well, to have a reason to go outside. if you guys are outside, I mean, if you guys are game players, then you could take some of those. There's a lot of different sure. outdoor games. Yeah. We just played one called spike ball this weekend. And it's oh, okay. super fun. And you could just go outside yeah. and be like 10 minutes of spike ball. Done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a good yeah, idea. Fun. I've heard of spike ball. I've not played it before. Uh, we just played it. Super fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to look up a YouTube video or something. How about this for a tradition? Every year at the beginning of the school year, you buy an outside game. And so in a few years, you're going to have so many outside games. And then you just do between each, each lesson, you go do 10 yeah. minutes playing an outside game. That's a great idea. Sold. There's a new I tradition. just need to back up Brooklyn. I need to like rewind her a few That's years. That's what I'm so that feeling as they get things. older, Yvette. Right? I'm like, we're, wait, wait. I'm running out of time. I have so many more ideas. <laughs> I know. I know. Ah. Um, anyway, I love you talked about playing music. That was one of the yes. things that I said. However, here's the issue with our family. I don't know if your family's like this or if other families are. Our family almost never agrees on music. Oh. Like the girls kind of like the same kind of music. Garrett and I have completely different tastes in music for the most okay. part. There are some things that we both really enjoy and the girls do not like the same kind of music that Garrett and I enjoy. Uh, um, I love country and bluegrass and, you know, and then I love hymns. Like I, yeah. you know, you know, I love my Shane and Shane. Um, yeah. And so those, but my girls don't enjoy listening to any of that. Uh, so it makes it hard to play music because yeah. someone will put something on and then everyone else is like, oh, I don't but if they, do they, So they like the same kind of music. So you could play what they love to get them up and going. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, we could. Who was it? Um, oh man, we had somebody on the podcast uh, several months ago and she talked about how they start out their day, their homeschool day with a specific song. And that's oh, how her fun. kids know it's time to come to the living room. School is starting uh, when they hear the music and with that specific song every day. And I love that idea. So maybe I just need to find there a you song go. And, find a song. Everyone that. likes we start at the morning like of Barney. every I love you. that would make your kids me. rebel <laughs> just revolt. The first day of school of every year we play the um the veggie tales. It's the first day of first grade. Like really? do you know that? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, guess I love that song. That's our first day of school song. Maybe we could do the veggie tales where is my hairbrush song because it seems like that is an ongoing you have thing in two our house. Girls. Always. Oh. Like where's my hairbrush? Where's my That's maybe we should That would be that. it and be like when you hear the where is my hairbrush song where's it's time for my breakfast. Hairbrush. Yeah. That's a good idea have a specific song that means it's time to gather instead of my voice yelling. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been calling you that... for five minutes. I like that yeah. idea. Yes. And by the end, how about this? And by the end of the song, they have to be seated. So they actually have the song right. to get there, to find their hairbrush oh, yeah. and actually get seated. Right. <laughs> okay. We're making up so new fun. things as we podcast. Right. As we yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Um, cooking together. That's another thing. Yeah. I am so thankful that my girls enjoy being in the kitchen because again, I do not. Um, and they love, Brooklyn likes to cook. Uh, meals, Lacey likes to bake. And so Aww. it's perfect because they do those things. And perfect. Um, yeah. Um, another idea is, of course, field trips, which that's kind of a given. Like, take right. as many field trips as you can. That's school. And that's really important for kids uh, to be out and, and exploring the world around them. Right. But one of the things that we did when we were back in California years ago, and it's kind of funny, it's almost kind of what launched us into traveling in the RV and, and, you know, our, doing our whole travel thing that we did for a few years. Um, we would call them family day adventures Oh, and we would literally get in the car and drive. Oh, and most of the time we didn't know where we were going. We would just take random roads and see where it would lead us to. Oh, I love that. And so that's a fun thing for, again, if you just need a break, Right. Or you can do an audio book in the car while yes. you're doing a family day adventure. You can listen to worship music. You can do all kinds of things. Just get in the car yep. and just drive. You can do it during baby's nap time. Maybe if baby oh, sleeps in the car, 
just different things to get, you know, just for a different atmosphere, different, you know, a change of scenery. Yes. Um, but it was fun. We would find the most random things and, you know, it's, we're still newish in Oklahoma, but so we're always discovering new things. I mean, we'll go down a road and I'll be like, hmm, I didn't even know this road existed. I had no idea these stores oh, were here, so or these fun. restaurants. Um, but even in California, I mean, we grew up in that town and we would find the most random things that we know, you know, look at this super cool bridge that we didn't even know existed. That's been here my whole life, only 10 minutes from my house, you know? Right. And so, um, it's really fun to do that. So family day adventures, I think are super duper fun. I love that. Just exploring. And I think that's so important because sometimes we start the four walls of our house start to just kind of close in on us. Yes. And I always tell new moms, like, just change the scenery, just go yeah. do something. To, even if it's going from one room to another, but there is something about just change the scenery. So that family day adventure, just exploring is yeah. such a fun idea. Yep. Yep. So much fun. I like it. And you can do, you know, if you're a Charlotte Mason homeschooler, you could do nature studies that way. I mean, totally. there's just so many. My kids used to do. like it that I'd get in the car and then one kid was in charge and they'd say left, right, left. Oh yeah. Right. That would be super And then fun. we just, I take whatever direction they say and who knows where we end up. And then the next kid does it. I don't know why that's oh, so that fun would be for fun. them. It drives me nuts because I'm like, we're in the same neighborhood every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be super uh, fun. I mean, you could, there are so many things you could do to make that fun. Like totally. you can give them a math worksheet and say, okay, yep. whoever can figure out this problem next or gets the next yes. problem right, they or get to tell me what direction to go. Or if your answer is even, we turn right. If the answer right, is odd, yeah. we turn left. I mean, there's so many fun, there's so many ideas to make homeschooling yeah. fun. In fact, yep. when this episode posts on social media, everybody should drop their number one, how they make homeschooling fun in there, because it's fun to get ideas yeah. from other moms. Totally. Sometimes yes. they're like, I don't know. I'm just paralyzed with this. Yeah. 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 I mean, you could do tests that way. Yeah. You could do a spelling test. You totally. could do trivia. You could, I mean, there be so are fun. so many things you yep. can do to make or on family a bike. You could fun. take bikes and do that with a little clipboard, you know? Abby, you You're can't ride no. a bike with Sorry. a clipboard. Oh, you totally can. You should what? see the things you ride bikes What kind of with. bikes do you have in Idaho? <laughs> no, you just balance it. I guess maybe that's not safe. No, Wear okay, don't listen to Abby. Okay, no one listen to Abby. <laughs> <laughs> can I ride a bike with a clipboard? I'm saying no to that. <laughs> no to that. If you have a helmet on, it's totally safe. <laughs> I reject that idea. Okay, fine. Get in your car. <laughs> but don't have a clipboard and write while you're driving either. That's not safe. No, but your passenger can. Your passenger can. Yeah. Done. Sold. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Yeah. We're almost out of time. So the last couple that I have, and then Abby, I don't know if you have any more to add to this, um, join a local support group or a co-op, of course. Okay. Um, if you haven't done that this year and you have a local support groups, so a lot of places have support groups where they have, you know, kids get together for field trips and activities and sometimes field days and things like that. And you don't have to be part of their co-op. You just can be part of their support group. And it gives you the opportunity to meet other families and um, other mamas and kids and stuff. So those are great. Or of course, co-ops, um, right. Watching videos, of course, um, you know, you have to be particular about what you put in front of your kids, but, uh, videos and documentaries, those are great ways to just mix it up, teach a lesson, you know, maybe yeah. it's a history thing of, I mean, you just, you've got to be careful with it, but, um, yeah, but your kids will learn so much more. I remember like, right. I would teach my kids for a week, something, and then they'd watch one episode of wild Kratts. Right, and right. then they would learn everything or they'd tell somebody something. They're like, where'd you learn that? And I'm like, clearly they're going to say mom. Cause I just spent right. a month teaching them. And they're like, we saw a YouTube video on it. Right. I don't know. It sticks more with them. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, that's a great way to, um, utilize totally uh, the internet. Yes. Um, be careful, just be careful with it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> art right. projects, which I'm not great at this, mm, me uh, either. but I know we've got mm -mm. some mamas who are fantastic yep. at doing art projects and, and they don't mind the Rats. glitter and yeah. the glue and all that stuff. Ugh, that and you know what? It doesn't out. have to be something you plan. Cause I was never that either. But then I learned if I just have them or give them a box of like art stuff yeah. and the table, they'll come up with they'll their create. own art pro. Yeah. So I've learned like, I don't have to plan it. I don't have to have these elaborate things, which is hard for me anyway. Cause then I'm like, you're not doing it right. I wouldn't use right. those two colors together. So I've learned right. I can't do that because I'm too much of a control freak. I just have to give them the stuff yes. and let them create whatever they want to create. Yeah. Brooklyn took a, um, she was visiting a co-op one day and she went into, um, the art class in that co-op. This was many years ago. And the lady who was teaching art was she was like, okay, I want you to like draw or paint this picture. And Brooklyn is a very artistic. So she likes to be creative. Well, the right. 
this mom who was teaching it, she was like, okay, no, I want you to paint this, this color and this, this <laughs> color. And Brooklyn commanded that. She was like, that lady's a horrible teacher. Ah, that's she so was telling funny. me how I had to paint my picture. And she was so deeply offended that this woman was telling her how she had to paint her picture because that's she funny. just was like, but that's not how I want to do it. And she's so, a yeah. creative. This lady was very kind, but she was a control freak and she wanted to uh, tell the kids how to do their art. And Brooklyn was sometimes like, it's painful. No. You're like, yeah, I don't feel like those two colors. Get, you just have to, I have to walk away and be like, be right. creative, oh, yeah. whatever you want to do. <laughs> yep. Yep. I can't uh, watch. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then the last one that I have, which I'm really, really trying this year and going to try um, to do is taking photos and videos, which oh, we've got 5 that. million photos and videos of our girls. But I just feel like the, when they were little, I used to do videos all the time yeah, because they were so cute and little right. and they would do funny things. Right. Um, but I really want to capture more of what they're doing. And, you know, even school, like this is our life. This is what right. we do. And um, so just taking more pictures and videos just Aww. to hold those memories. Because when right. you look back on them, when I look back on videos, I mean, so often, I don't know if you do this, I look back, I'm like, I don't even remember that. Right. I have zero recollection of, Aww. we watched a Christmas video not that long ago of our girls and they were really little. And I think Brooklyn was maybe five, maybe six. And I had literally zero recollection of, of this particular Christmas, none at all. Aww. And I was like, I am so thankful we have this video Pictures. and it had my nieces in there and they were Aww. all so little and so cute and they were hilarious. Um, and so I, I just, I want to capture more yeah. of that instead of like the, like, you know, posed pictures right, and planned right. out pictures, like just more every candid, day candid. This yep. is what our life is. Oh, I so, love that. Yeah. Do you have any more? Well, I think you hit most of them. I mean, I'm just, I'm huge on traditions, but I say also it'd be fun to mix it up once in a while and be like, put one kid in charge of the day. You know, they need to cover oh, the same yeah. things, but like let them steer the day. Yeah. How do you want to do the day? And I think you learn a lot from that to go, what things did they keep? What things did they throw out? Which things yeah. mattered? What order works yes. for them? And it yeah. just, it mixes it up. And I think when they're in charge, it also adds for them. So I think yeah. that would be a fun, you know, maybe once a month, each kid gets a day where they get to they get to yeah. be in charge of the day. They get to yeah. pick the song you wake up to. They get to pick what time you do what and how, what order it goes and who sits where. And I think that'd be fun. That is fun. I love that. I love it when kids get to, to take to charge lead. of yeah. things. It's good for so, them. It is. It is. Which by the way, this has nothing to do with this. I just was thinking about it as you were talking about that. I don't know if I've mentioned this. We finally figured out the, like who does the dishes dilemma. Yeah. You told me Did I tell a, you this? a month, right? Or a week? They do two weeks, two weeks, okay. two weeks. Yeah. And then so they get to sit in the front seat of the car. And they get to sit in the front, whoever's Brilliant. dishes week it is, or two weeks it is, if it's your day to do dishes, you get to sit in the front seat of the car. And can I just tell you, it's working. Like, why didn't I do this years ago? Ah. It has eliminated so many fights and my girls, it's my turn. It's my turn to sit in the front seat. And, or it's, I did the dishes last night or I did them yesterday. No, no. Isn't so it they, funny how you finally figure something out? You're right? like, how did I not know this all those years ago? I know. I know. It's oh. ridiculous. So I'm That's so such a good idea. So that's a good idea. So it they have the great. one we negative help, thing course, and the dishes. one positive thing. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Garrett and I help them with dishes, but ultimately it's their responsibility For to the get week. it done when it's their dishes week. And it's been magical. Oh, <laughs> I love that idea. And it makes homeschool more fun because then there's not as much fighting. Drama. Yes. Oh, dear. Eliminate dear. as much drama as you can. And I've learned it usually starts with me. I yeah. like... I'm allowing drama, you know, yeah. like I'm allowing them to bicker over the dishwasher rather than just be like, eh, nope, this is how right. it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, Well, we're out I of love time. It. Abby, thank you for being with me this week. Thanks. It is always so much fun to chat with you and get you to share with our audience what's and on I our hope- hearts, what's going on in our families. Yes. And, and I hope everybody has an amazing school year and yeah. just, just has a really good, you know, that the honeymoon phase lasts a little bit longer this year. Yes. Yes. As always, if you guys have any prayer requests you want our family to be praying for you, send us an email at podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. And we promise to pray over those requests every time. Um, and if you haven't listened to our other podcast, the Homeschool Insights podcast, you can check that out um, on our website, schoolhouserocked.com, or you can find it on any podcast app, the Homeschool Insights podcast. We love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Stay tuned to the very end to hear a clip of what's coming up next week on the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. Bye. Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand 
until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. Literally the mentality that people bring to homeschooling often is they take their experience, which is fair enough, about what education is supposed to look like, uh, which was largely them sitting in a brick and mortar school for 12 years uh, at a desk in a classroom looking at a chalkboard and they try to bring that home and replicate that model within the home and um, that's counterproductive. Yeah. That, that is really not what we want to be going for in homeschooling. Homeschooling is not, you know, picking up your child's desk, carrying it down the street, plunking it on your kitchen floor and saying, okay, now we're going to just do everything that the public school does 